Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. And uh, welcome, welcome. Um, today, I'm going to do some fun painting on a new table runner, okay? So now I'm gonna end up with two options for um, my dining room table for the holidays. But I could possibly use the other one um, on a side table, or I might actually use it for even part of the um, decor of the table. My kids decided I needed to try something different, so I've got a thicker one, okay? And this is like a nice linen uh, table runner, and it is long, okay? Let me find my package here. This thing is, oh yes, 14 inches wide and 72 inches long, okay? So I've got a nice long runner here to work with. Um, so it will definitely go the length of my table and maybe over the edges, we'll see. Um, but I was going to share with you guys some fun painting techniques on um, how to paint it because it is just, a, I don't want to say it's pure white, maybe a little bit off-white, um, more onto like a, a soft linen color. And um, I don't want to keep it just uh, a, a basic color, so I decided I was going to paint it, okay? And we have this beautiful edge here, so I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and paint this edge a color. Um, I'm thinking of doing some stenciling on the center panel and possibly even finishing it up with a roller. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, but I actually broke out the iron and tried to iron out some of the wrinkles so it would be laying a little flatter. And then one of my greatest little tricks, you guys, this is just a wonderful secret for any time you're working on fabric. Um, this is just a real smooth piece of cardboard. Anytime we get um, some real, it's real, real thin, okay? Um, anytime we get any of this in with any of our packing stuff, I always hold on to it. Um, I take this outside and spray it with our good old stick it spray adhesive, okay? This is a repositionable spray adhesive, not a permanent mount, okay? And um, this is wonderful because when I'm painting, I sometimes want to be able to brush pretty aggressively and so I can um, spray that with the, the adhesive, okay, the spray adhesive and then I'm able actually to put it down on that cardboard and smooth it completely out, okay, so that way I can get rid of even all my wrinkles and it's so wonderful to be able to work on a piece of fabric that has no wrinkles on it, okay. Okay, so that is my little trick there, you guys, on getting your fabric to stay nice and straight. Um, okay, I'm going to use um, DIY Paints by Debbie's Design Diary, and um, this is Apothecary is the color. It is, um, it's a green, but it's a really subtle, sagey kind of green, and I thought it'd be pretty on the outside edge. Um, I'm not always big and traditional, and at first I kind of thought, I was going to go um, red, but whenever you water down your reds, they have a tendency to um, go pink, okay? And I really didn't want a pink table runner, so I decided to go with this green. Now, I just pulled out not a ton of paint, okay, because I really want a soft wash. And um, normally I'd recommend creating enough of your wash so that you have enough of it to complete the whole project and it would be at the same tone okay okay so I'm gonna grab I just got a paper towel out okay because I don't have any scrap fabric back here right now because I want to see how diluted um, I have created this paint okay and this kind of gives me an idea that I still have pretty strong color okay so if I want to make that a little softer I can just add some more water um, so this is definitely a good probably 70% water and only 20-30% um, paint in here okay so it really really is watered down to create a wash and I'm using a stiff um, bristled brush this is referred to as like a filbert um, we do have them on the website they're more of the bristle of a stencil brush that is stiffer and anytime I'm doing a wash Okay, that's definitely a little bit softer, okay? Um, I like to have a stiffer bristle brush, okay, um, to actually be able to scrub it into the fabric. Okay, so all I'm going to do is use my brush, 
And because it's a stiff bristle brush, I'm actually able to get like right to that stitching line and um, create a straight edge. And I can change. So, I mean, it's just so cool to be able to change the color of your fabrics. And this whole edge is going to be wet. So um, I am painting with mainly colored water. This will take overnight to completely dry to a point where I think I'd want to still be handling it. After you have used your spray adhesive on your, uh, your cardboard here, you're going to find that um, it'll stick really great the first and like the second time. And then you're probably going to have to go out and spray it again. Now I say go out, you guys, because I don't like to spray that stuff inside my studio. It stinks and it's, I mean, it has warnings on the can, okay? So you see that this is danger, okay? Don't spray this indoors um, and you just don't want to be breathing it in. So make sure you go outside and um, spray that. Uh, so I am just kind of going through this, okay? You see how I'm moving it around because I like being right-handed. I like having um, that straight edge on my right side because it's going to help me to keep a straight line. If I do this on the other side, I'll probably not stay as straight. Um, I will let this dry overnight, okay? So far, I had painted the outside border with um, some DIY paint that I had uh, mixed with water to create like a wash and now I've been starting to do the center part with a checkerboard Okay, and this is just a real light color that I'm using on the center to kind of create a background color so I want to come show you what I'm doing here and Let you see this process to uh, Do any painting and with stenciling I normally am doing a swirling motion when I'm on fabric So it's nice to have the stencil um or the fabric in position and not moving on me. Um, I'm just lining up to the previous row of checkerboards that I've already painted. And I'm kind of blending it together a couple of colors. I'm using, uh, these are both by Americana, uh, bleached sand and light buttermilk. And I'm mixing a little bit of fabric medium in as well. Uh, and just creating a soft color. And the reason why I'm adding the um, fabric medium is it'll do two things for you. It will keep uh, the paint from getting too stiff and uh, also will help it to wash better uh, if you plan on washing your project. And another thing, if you are painting on fabric and you're looking for whatever you have created to stay as vibrant, uh, as it is, then I do suggest even dry cleaning. Okay, so how quickly and easy that row was stenciled, and I'm just repositioning to the last row, tape it back down again, and that way I can keep going. Um, now, every time I reload my brush, I am going to my paper towel and wiping off the excess so that I've got uh, basically a dry brush. Uh, fabric can be a little bit more forgiving than a painted surface, but you don't want to just load your brush and go directly from loading it to your project because it'll probably be too much paint and could possibly bleed underneath. So make sure that you are offloading some of that. And I'm not loading too much paint on my brush to start with, so there's not much to offload. Um, this goes really quick once you have everything secured down. And this is, like I said, the background pattern that I wanted to have on here. So once I have the checkerboard done, I'm going to allow this to dry. And then I will come back and put another design over the top of this and create just a layered, um, a layered finish on here. Okay, I'm back to finish up my table runner. And I've decided to add a really cute little design called the holly vine um, as a border around the outside edge. So I'm just going to get started here you guys and bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing.
Okay, so this is the table runner so far. We've painted the outside edge, we created the checkerboard in the center, and now I'm just going to use a little two overlay stencil design to create the holly vine going around the outside edge. So we have two overlays. There's overlay one and overlay two. And the easiest way I've always found to use them, if I didn't want to actually um, use the registration marks that they have, is to just go ahead and line them up so that you can see the complete design. And that way you can figure out where you want to position it um, on your project and tape it down. And I'm just using some uh, blue tape. And then you can lift up the top overlay and your overlay that you need to work on is directly in position for you. Okay, we're going to be using um, Americana acrylics again. And um, I've already made a little sample, just wanted to make sure that I liked the, co the color combination I picked. But we're going to be using Napa Red, Plantation Pine Green, and Burnt Umber. And then I also put some fabric medium out here on the plate, which is really probably hard to see. It's almost a clear liquid. And I'm just picking up a little bit of the fabric, um, just a little bit of the fabric paint or fabric painting medium as needed. If I feel like the paint's getting too thick, I want to thin it down a little bit, um, just picking up a little bit. So um, after you load the paint into your brush, you want to go over to your paper towel and make it seem almost ridiculous and take all that paint off, okay? You're creating what's called a dry brush technique. And if you go directly from the plate and picking up your paint to your project, I'll guarantee you the paint will seep underneath the stencil. So after you've wiped it all off, or what seems like, um, this particular overlay has a couple different elements on it. It has the stem for the vine um, as well as the holly leaves, okay? So I'm coming through first and doing the burnt umber on the stem part, and then I'm gonna pick up the plantation pine. So load the paint on, take it back off, and I'm just using the plantation pine on the leaves. Now I'm actually getting some shading in here where I'm lightly going over the whole leaf and then coming back and letting the color build a little bit on the edges to give a little bit of dimension. Um, they're at least big enough that I can get a little bit of shading into them. That's just me. I, I can't help myself, okay? Um, but you can see that it goes pretty fast. You will have to continue to reload your brush as you run out of paint. You'll just go back and reload it quickly like I did, offload every single time. Okay, never forget to offload because that's when the paint's going to bleed underneath and you're not going to have perfect, cute little poly leaves. <laughs> um, so after I'm done with this repeat, I just got a couple more leaves to do. Then I'm going to move over on to my next overlay, which is the berries. Now I like to do overlay one, two, one, two, instead of just doing number ones all the way around because it's easier, I feel, to line things up. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to remove that overlay. I'm going to put overlay one on top. Okay, so now my second overlay is underneath, but um, I can still see through the mylar and I can see through there to line up to the leaves that I've already painted. Once I have everything lined up, I'll push the tape back down, take off overlay number one, and then my holly berries are in position to stencil as well. Okay, now like I said, these are going to be painted uh, in Napa Red. And then there's these items are so small, the little berries on here, that you're really not going to get much shading inside the berries. You can maybe have some of them lighter and some of them darker, but you're not going to get much shading in them. Um, they're just too, too tiny of an element. <laughs> okay, so once you're done with your first repeat, then you'll again pick up both overlays, put number one on the bottom, and then line up to where you would like the next repeat to go. And nothing has to be perfect here. Um, as far as how I'm repeating this, I'm just letting it line up um, to whatever, okay? So I just had it uh, 
the stem kind of line up or come close to where a leaf was and that really is it. So I'm going to continue to go around the parameter and I'm allowing the berries to kind of go from the painted trim onto the checkerboards and I'm just going to meander all the way around. Um, once this project is completely stenciled, um, we will show you um, the completed runner as well as the completed decorated table that this will be on. So thank you so much for joining um, this video. I hope you've learned a lot about painting fabric, stenciling fabric, and if by chance you have any questions, um, always feel free to contact us here at the studio. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.